All right, so I made one of these videos that I titled <laughs> The Atheist Community or something about the Atheist Community and got pushed back on the title. I mean, I, I get it to a certain degree. I understand that atheist is not necessarily a community. It's a collective of people with, to some degree, very disparate interests and very disparate takes on atheism. I get that to some degree, but in Twitter and YouTube, it is also a collective. And just because it is a loose confederation of, of people with disparate if ideas doesn't mean it doesn't operate to some degree as a collective. You know, think about Christianity. You say Christianity this, 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 and Christianity is even a thousand times more varied than atheist proper. So there is a, basically an atheist community here in Twitter and YouTube. And part, paradoxically, part of the reason why people get so defensive about atheism and the, that term is because the, the community is not very well defined and it is kind of a loose confederacy. There's no such thing out there in the real world, and I went back and was kind of, you know, a little bit surprised to find this out, as any sort of atheist meeting house or atheist group center. There may be one or two in Austin and one or two in select places around the country, but in New York, when I went back to New York, there was no such thing as in the real world atheism hadn't penetrated at all. And here's the thing, atheists, I promise you this is true, and I'm not saying this because I want to score points against atheism or any reason like that. I'm just telling you because it's the God's honest truth. Okay, you talk about nons, nons, nons all the time, like that's an important trend for atheism. It isn't. Why? Because most of the people I talked to were nons, almost everybody. Most everybody I know from my former life, before I was a Christian, high school, college, almost all nons, almost all liberals, secular. They are the exact type of people who you would expect to become atheists. And guess what? None, none of them are atheists. <laughs> I thought it was funny, you know, you just wrote it. Wasn't that funny, Craig? I really kind of thought it was. None of them are atheists. None of them are. But here's the more important thing if you're an atheist. And I'm saying this to help you, not to harm you or score fake points. They aren't interested in atheism. Not only are they not atheists, they're nons. They ain't interested in atheism. That's back there in the real world. Why? What's moving the product? If you're one of these people, and there are some people out there, I know they exist, I know for a fact Shannon is one, and a godless mom is one, who care about, like, you know, presenting the atheist community in the best light and, you know, bringing atheism into prime time and giving a good reputation to atheism as, as a whole then you should be listening to me. Why? Well, I'm just telling you the truth. I'm not telling you this to score fake points against atheist community. Really not. I have no agenda in this. I really don't. I don't care. I really don't. I honestly don't. I'm just observing. And what I, the observations I make about the quote-unquote atheist community are just observations. You're free to take them or leave them. But there are a group of people in here who call themselves atheists, right? We understand that. Okay. And they do operate somewhat as a collective. And my observations about them are actually really, really compelling and kind of interesting. And if you're an atheist, they're worth your time just to hear. Why? Because they will give you insight into them. There's insight here to be offered, I promise. So, they're not interested in atheism back there in the real world. That's God's honest truth. Think about why. Why aren't they interested? What does an atheist actually offer somebody? The non who I'll talk to, for example. You go up to him, you're an atheist. Hey, you want to be an atheist? Why? All it is, it means a lack of belief in God. Okay, I don't believe in God. What's in it for me? What's the selling point? What's the marketing strategy? Why are you, what's moving the product off the shelf? And if you're one of these people who really cares about atheism being ready for prime time, that should be foremost in your consideration. Why are they buying the product? Because here in atheist land, Twitter and YouTube, I know exactly why a huge chunk of them are here and what moved the product originally. The, the confluence of forces, sociological forces that produced this first run that we, that we are all dealing with now that I'm going to call atheist proper, these twi the people who have YouTube channels dedicated to atheists and the people who are Twitter atheists, there's a really, really, two really key reasons why they're here. There was a key marketing strategy or key forces that put them here. There was the four horsemen. And they were generally, they are, they can be described as their take on religion is extremely pejorative towards religion in general, Christianity in particular, okay? They are scientismists 
to a big degree. They always poo-poo philosophy and talk about science, science, science. So they're to a degree gay for science. Yeah, gay for science. Let's just call what it is, gay for science. And uh, they're, they're, they're ferociously anti-religious and anti-Christian. Now, the key selling point for that type of atheism was really obvious. A fundamentalist Christian who is starting to question his faith. That 60 to 70 percent of the people here who call themselves atheists are what? Fundamentalist Christians who were starting to question their faith. And that was the key market for that type of product. And why did it, why did it strike gold with them? Why, was, why did it light them up and they want that product? Really, really, really obvious reason. But this is the real reason. It was, here you go, someone who's questioning your faith in a really, really deeply, somewhat toxic, I'll give you that, toxic religious community with intense fundamentalist religious community, and you're starting to question your faith. Here's, here's what it's offering you. Permission to think freely. It's exactly what it offered them. Here, permission to think freely. It might even have been contraband. Here's this dangerous book. Yo, man, I got Richard Dawkins' book. Yo, you kidding? You kidding? Oh, man, I'm so excited. I can't believe it. Can't wait to take it. Take it home. Read it. Oh. The irony and the paradox is the louder the preacher in the, the sermon booth thundered against the scourge of atheism. The scourge of atheism. This Richard Dawkins is an immoral degenerate. The more attractive that product seemed to a certain type of core audience. I said, that's just how those things work. That's really how those things work. A lot of those guys are guys, right? Are we correct? There's a handful of females in the atheist community. But a huge chunk of them are guys. Did you notice that? And a huge chunk of them were fundamentalists. And some of them think atheism is cool. That's the only reason they think it's cool. Why? Because some preacher who they didn't like, <laughs> who they really didn't respect and didn't like, loudly thundered against that moral degenerate Richard Dawkins. He'll take you to hell. And that's like exactly why I watch the Warriors. The Warriors, if you don't know, same principle at work. Seventh grade was like my favorite movie when I was in seventh grade. The Warriors come out to play. Yay. Ching, ching, ching. No, why'd you do it, man? Why'd you shoot Cyrus? No, it wasn't us. It was the Warriors. They shot Cyrus. Awesome. It's an awesome movie. But why did I watch it in seventh grade? Because the same principle at work. It was being denounced on the news as dangerous. This movie is dangerous. This time they've really gone too far. And this movie is truly a bad thing. And that's catnip to a little, young little, you know, hooligan like I was. That's catnip. I can't wait to check that out. Why? Because it sounds like I'm going to be cool just by watching it. It's going to turn me into a badass just like that. And that's exactly how it worked. It's exactly the paradigm, same reason I watched NWA, went and made sure I bought the outline. This, is, this time it's really gone too far. This time it really is dangerous. These guys are sick. They're crazy. i got to check that out. Same paradigm with atheism. But what it really offered someone was actually relatively important if you were in a fundamentalist community and you were the type of person who wanted to think freely. That's a key. That's why I thought I would get along with atheists. Why? Not everybody back there in fundamentalist land wants permission to think freely. Not everybody's looking for that. Go back and ask your friends. Poke around. You'll see. Why? Not everybody's wired up like you if you're an atheist. There's a reason why I thought I'd identify with them. Why? Because I kind of do. I get it. They're more philosophical. They're more inquisitive. They're not just going to, you know, they pride themselves on not just taking whatever comes across their plate and swallowing it down just like everybody else. And to a certain degree, they're right. They are a little bit more like that. And what, athe what atheism offered so someone who is questioning their fundamentalist Christianity is really important to a certain degree. Here, here's permission to think freely. They might even have good friends, good intention friends in those churches. Someone like Aaron might have had good intention friends who said like, no, don't even, she might have said like, you know, I'm not really sure if Jonah lived in the whale <laughs> or whatever. Started questioning it. She might have had friends who said, no, don't even question that, Aaron. Shh. You're going to go to hell for even thinking that. Ah! <laughs> they put this boogeyman deep in your brain. They put a boogeyman deep in your brain, and that's kind of what they do. Now, not every religious environment does that, guys. I promise. I know you don't find that really hard to believe, but you can sort of tell that's true. Why? Because we have a lot of people here now in Christian land who aren't like that at all. 
who you would never describe in a million zillion years as a fundamentalist along those lines. You can watch John DePew videos for seven straight hours. Is he going to send you to hell at any time? No, probably give me a free ride. He's <laughs> about, in fact, the opposite. You can watch a lot of the people who I interact with, and you will never get sentenced to hell, probably not ever, for thinking the wrong thing. That's a big part of what goes on there in fundamental slam. And it's exaggerated. And it's toxic to a, to a degree. I agree that it's toxic. The type of God that they're preaching, there is a healthy balance when you are preaching, you know, hellfire and brimstone. You are trying to put the fear of God in someone literally, and sometimes that is a good thing to put in somebody. But it's balanced. You know? I grew up in the exact opposite environment where it was just way too permissive and it was really destructive. <laughs> I swear to God, it's really destructive. You know, it's one thing to, like, be a little loose with your kids. And it's another thing. We had one of my friends, Mike Goldberg, I think I've told the story. On junior year, his parents would disappear for the weekend. So we'd all go over there and stay in the entire night drinking and doing drugs. The entire night, Saturday night, <laughs> all night. And the next day, Friday, Saturday night. That's not healthy. That's not healthy. It's too, it was too permissive. Regular America, at least back in the 80s, was way too permissive. There were no rules. There were no regulations. I went out every Friday, Saturday night, came home 3.30 in the morning. Because by the time my parent, by the time I got around, my parents were too tired to fight. So they'd be like, what time are you coming home? Well, 12 30, 1 o'clock. And they'd be asleep. And I'd come home 3 30 in the morning, drunk, drunk every single night, drunk off my butt. What time did you get home? I said, oh, no, probably around 1. <laughs> Never was. They were just too tired to even do anything about it. So there is there's a balance here. There is a If you're a parent, you understand this well, right? You want your kid to have proper boundaries so they don't do destructive things, especially when drugs are involved. Especially when drugs are involved. Why? Because drugs, let me tell you from, they absolutely are destructive and those aren't myths about them. They can really, really harm people. I know a lot of people who took that one mushroom too many, did that one drug too many and never came back and were never the same. I know a lot of people like that. I shouldn't know any. I know at least five. I know them well. So back then in the party days, especially in the late 80s, early 90s, there was a lot of, you know, Bad influences, a lot of destructive things going on at just regular old people parties. Now, I'm not talking about even before I got, became like, you know, Mr. Wild hanging out in New York in the, in the city all the time. I'm talking about just regular college stuff. Even that back then took you too far. Took you too far into the direction of not healthy, destructive, this is too, 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 too much going on. So there's a balance. And fear of God can be understood as fear of consequences. In a secular way, it's just fear of, you know, <laughs> downside, possible downsides. Here, here's crack cocaine. Is there a possible downside to us trying this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fear, fear of God, if you want to call it that, or it can just be common sense. <laughs> yeah, there's a downside. Probably shouldn't try that. Why? Because it's probably pretty destructive. I swear to God, stuff like that was all over the place back then. I swear to God, it's true. I swear to God, that is true. Back in the 90s, the early 90s, you know, the big, one of the big social drugs that was available at parties was heroin. Promise. Go, go watch a freaking Nirvana documentary if you don't believe me. It's even in the song. And I forget just why I taste, oh yeah, I guess it makes me smile. I found it hard, it's hard to find, oh well, whatever, never mind. I forget just why I taste, that is slang for taking heroin. It's part of the hipster scene back then. You go to any party, it was readily, or not readily available, it was there. That's destructive. That's what happens when you take boundaries off of people. They tend to start getting involved in destructive things. That's actually one of the messages of, the, of the Exodus. You know, the people lost all sense of self-control. But that's for another story. Anyways, ain't this proper? There were two main selling points. Most of the people who were part of the first wave of atheists who populated and started channels, okay, came here from fundamentalist Christianity. A huge chunk of them. And that was the selling point. Here, here's permission to think freely. A person sitting in a pew goes through a couple of things happen. 
I'm not sure if I believe all the metaphysical commitments of Christianity. I'm not sure I believe this. But the more important part is, I'm not sure I like these people. Why is that the more important part? Because a lot of people are in normal churches where they like the environment and they're happy and they have some back and forth and it's a healthy, peaceful environment. They're not sure they believe everything in the, in the Bible either. But they don't care. Why? Because they're getting a lot out of the environment itself. Happened to my brother-in-law. He came out to California, saw the change in me, became a Christian just like that on the spot. Went back to New York and for a while was like really gung-ho about Christianity. One of the first things he said after being a Christian for about a year is, you know, I'm not sure I believe the Old Testament. <laughs> I guess that makes me Arabic. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> That's what he said. I'm not sure if I believe the Old Testament. Just like that. Now, fundamentals, Christian, no, oh, don't even think that. Shh, shh, ah, shh, shh. He didn't mean it, God. He didn't mean it, God. <laughs> That's what, like, a fundamentals Christian. There may be good intention doing that. They may have good intentions doing that. You know, I'm sure some of Aaron's friends, I, 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 I don't know if she, I don't remember when exactly she started questioning, so I don't remember the timeline. But if she had fundamentals friends or notes from Autumn, if they had fundamentals friends when they were starting to question, they may even have good intention friends who were like, no, no, shh, don't even talk like that. Put that Christopher Hitchens down, put it down, ah, it's going to kill you. <laughs> you know? Why? Because their perspective on this stuff isn't completely rational, let's just be honest. Fundamentals Christianity is, is too intense. It's too extreme. It's, it's not a balanced view of Christianity that you can actually grow up and, you know, kind of put into your life as a peaceful thing. To some degree, there's stuff that I empathize with fundamentals Christians. Why? Because Christianity does, in the Bible, instruct you to be really committed to Christianity and put it, you know, your, your commitment to God above everything else. But that doesn't mean you have to become like a total crackpot, like Pokemon's going to sentence you to have. If you touch Pokemon, you're going to cover part. It doesn't mean you have to be totally insane either. So there's a, there's a balancing act there. There's a fine line. And that's part of like, you know, what Christians need to actually successfully navigate and work out amongst themselves. There's a, there's, there's a, there's a you know, the, the disparity between the, the two liberal Christian and the too rigid ideological conservative Christian is real. Because if you're too liberal, then you have these Christians who don't really, you know, are they even Christian? <laughs> the, one, the one in that debate, I forget her name, but it was funny, watching her debate Alyssa Childers, and that was the essence of the debate. You know, progressive Christianity is a destructive. And the one who was the progressive Christian was like, you know, her views changed from within the debate. <laughs> her beliefs changed like from sentence to sentence. So there is some sort of core defining principles or set of doctrines that we probably do all agree to or will all agree to, but what exactly those are hasn't been quite worked out correctly yet. You know, it hasn't. My only point is that it's entirely possible to be a person in a church, part of a church environment, and be really happy and contented because you like the people and you like the worship songs and you're going to church and you feel like a part of the community and you're helping like feed orphans and stuff and you feel good about yourself because you think you're actually giving back and if there is a God you're serving him to some degree and still question the metaphysics but well, I don't think Jonah lived in a whale I'm not sure if I believe it. and not care and not care that's the point you go, I'm not sure if I believe that particular passage or the interpretation of that passage. You can be agnostic about a lot of those questions. You can. What you can't be is agnostic in fundamentals Christianity. Why? Because they tell you you can't be. They tell you you can't be agnostic. You've got to be 100% in. And it's fake. Why? Because the people who are, who are saying, now I've heard preachers say that out of their own mouth. And I rolled my eyes as they were saying it. Why? Because I know for a fact the person saying it wasn't 100% obedient. It's just something they say to cheerlead. One a pastor's wife, a famous pastor's wife, said this at a meeting I was at. 99% obedience is still disobedience. And of course, on cue, all the Christians are like, yeah, except me. I was like, yeah, please. You're 100% you're obedient. Give me a freaking break, lady. Give me a freaking break. Why? Because I knew for a fact she wasn't 100% obedient. I can see her buy, I do buy her fruits. She wasn't even close. And sure enough, that woman filed for divorce like a year later. I swear to God. I won't mention her name. Swear to God that happened. Same person. I'm not saying she might not have 
reasons to file for divorce. You know, sometimes divorce is legit, but you weren't 100% obedient is my only point. Who do you think you're fooling? So a lot of these people who roundly say, you know, obedience, 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 aren't actually practicing what they preach, and that's been really obvious the whole time. They aren't actually practicing what they preach. They aren't. They aren't. You know, they're preaching it, and they, they, they don't, I'm, you know, who knows if they even believe that they're as committed as they are. So it's entirely possible to be part of a church environment, okay, be skeptical about some of the metaphysical claims of the church that you are attending and still get a lot out of it and still kind of sort of believe in God the entire time and be a kind of sort of, I'm not sure, but, you know, I, I'm getting a lot out of this, Christian. You know, they call them Sunday Christians, but you can turn Sunday Christians into more committed Christians just by improving their relationship just by improving the message, by improving the what goes on at the church. If what goes on in the church is more intense and more pure, it inspires more commitment. It's that simple. If you are dealing with pastors who are really, really trying to walk the walk and they can see that, that will inspire them to be more committed. Does it work in the opposite? Loudly haranguing people to put the Pokemon down or burn in hell. <laughs> put that Pokemon down or you'll burn in hell. Doesn't really work. Why? Because you 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 undermine your own credibility when you do it. At some point, the, the intelligent 16 or 17 year old is going, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. And if there's a Richard Dawkins book nearby, they're going to grab it. And then the, the sky won't fall in on them. <laughs> this, you know, the sky, they'll, they'll read it that night under the covers like it's a dirty magazine. I can't believe I'm reading this exciting thing. It's Richard Dawkins. Whoa. So cool. Be just like when I first time I was walking around with weed in my pocket in ninth grade. I swear to God, my friend said that to me. It's like I felt like such a badass, and I knew exactly what it meant. I felt like the baddest, like, I can't believe I have drugs in my pocket, man. <laughs> it's the same idea. A lot more innocent version of the same idea, to tell you the truth, but the same idea. But when they wake up in the morning, and they read the Richard Dawkins book, and the sky didn't fall in on them, then you have undermined your credibility. That's the point. You've undermined your credibility. Why? Because the sky didn't, did nothing happen to them. So that's the first big market for atheists, and that's the most important market. That market may still be around. I sincerely doubt that market is going to have as much legs as it's had in the past. Why? Because there are a lot of Christians here. If, you're, if it's a journey of deconstruction that takes a year and a half, you've got a lot of stopping points now in between deconstruction and total deconversion, I'm an atheist. A lot of stopping points that you can comfortably stay in and be fine. It used to be either or. And if it's a binary choice between like a rigid type of how Drew was raised, if it's choice is binary, you know, either be raised the way Drew is raised and 100% committed or an atheist. Atheist is the more honest position. Why? There's less metaphysical commitments. There's less, you have to believe less false things. Philosophically speaking, it's the more honest position. That's why someone get, like Drew can actually be an honest person and have integrity. And I'm like, well, how on earth are you an atheist then? And I listen to his story and I'm, yeah, it's more honest than what he came from. Committing to what he came from would be dishonest. I accept that. <laughs> I, I totally understand that. That makes complete sense to me. It's just not either or. That's the point. It's not even close. And at some point, that's going to start affecting the way the atheist community operates. Why? Because they've been trying to cover that fact up. And, and then the other wave of atheists were the debate me bros. Those are people who don't care whether God exists. They don't care about philosophical arguments for God. They don't really care about religion at all. They saw Christopher Hitchens wreck someone in the debate. They saw Matt Dillahunter do the same thing. And that's what they're here to do. Make somebody feel small and stupid. Can't wait. That's what they're here to do. Those guys are gone. Why? Because those guys are idiots. And you should want them gone. Why? Because they're a bad look for your entire community. They're a pack of idiots and they're awful human beings and you should want them out. You should say good riddance. Why? Because they suck. And when people are talking about, I don't want to be an atheist anymore, that's what they're talking about. When people make these videos, the atheist community is to poison and toxic. That's who they're talking about. Watch how those people treat decent human beings and you'll see exactly who they are. Awful. And you don't want to be like them. And that's the real tension in the atheist community. Why? Because the philosophical atheists ain't like that. 
They're basically gentlemen scholars who really care about religion and philosophy of religion. Basically, they're gentlemen scholars. For the most part, that's how they operate. Honest actors who really care about religion and philosophy of religion. And they don't even want to be associated with this pack of thugs. That's the real tension. And they're, the philosophical atheists are going to win. Why? Because the pack of thugs are usually idiots. Every once in a rare while, there's a smart one in there, but they're usually idiots. And they aren't going to be able to compete in the months and years to come at all. And once they start feeling stupid, which will happen very soon, then they're gone. Bullies only bully when they can. They're bullies, intellectual bullies. And like I said, paradoxically, they're idiots to a man. But they're bullies. And bullies only bully who they can bully. And the day is coming where they won't be able to. Even the high-level ones who've been trying to pull it me on Twitter, that's the only variation. You got the, the quantum mechanics experts, <laughs> the physics experts who roll up on me to try and show me where to go. I'll show this Christian where to go. Thinks he understands quantum mechanics. <laughs> Can't wait. Same idea. They're a little bit smarter than the, 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 the total clown poser idiots that are, for the most part, antagonizing the Christian. The only reason they've been successful, as I've said, if you go back and look at the history of this space, they had two main opponents seven years ago. Uh, Venom Fang X and Joshua Furstein, or Fuerstein. And, you know, let's <laughs> just be honest. That's the only reason they got any ground. Why? Because those weren't really opponents. They were complete, they're complete idiots, and they found, even dumber than them, to push around. And that's what they're doing on Twitter as we speak. They're bullying up some Christian who's not too bright. That's what they're doing on Twitter as we speak. Go look. I promise. I promise. That's exactly what's happening on Twitter right now as we speak. But the paradox is they aren't smart enough to stay in business as intellectual bullies. Why? Because there are enough Christians now that we outgun them. The dumb ones. Just the Christians who have showed up in the last two years. Take like London Theist, Ron, and Ron doesn't have, Ron, you don't have a channel yet. Well, you kind of have a channel. But adhere to apologetic Zach. Invoking theism. I don't know if these guys showed up exactly in two years, dry apologists, but roughly within the last three years. Christian idealism. I can list about 20. Spartan theology, John DePew. I can honestly list about 20. Stephanie. Stephanie! Ah! <laughs> Behavior-wise, yeah, I understand Stephanie's a Dillon. I understand. We all, we all agree on that. <laughs> but, but she's not so stupid. All right. <laughs> Never mind about Stephanie. No, Stephanie's been here a long time. Stephanie's been here the whole time with me. But the dynamic has shifted dramatically in the last two or three years. I don't know exactly when it shifted, but it used to be Stephanie and I were the only ones around, for the most part. That's how we got to know all these guys. Why? Because we were like for one of the few people around. Now there's a, a big chunk, and they outgun the atheist. If Nathan is on our squad, if he's officially a Christian, then we powerfully outgun them. If elephant philosophy comes back in, we powerfully outgun them. Talking about, you know, everyone dumber than rationality rules. And that's almost all of them. Now, rationality rules is the cutoff. He's smart enough to be a philosophical atheist if he starts applying himself. I think he's getting there. I think he's smart enough, and I think his channel is shifting and growing. Uh, some, somebody disagreed with me. I think it was Sparky. I don't know. I see him heading in that direction. That's Alex Connors heading in that direction. That's the only direction to head in. Why? Because that's the only game in town. So there's two main reasons why people came here. One, because it was catnip to a certain type of fundamentals Christian. That's fact. And then two, another contingency showed up in the wake. Why? Because they wanted to get in people's faces and wreck them, bro. And those guys are gone. Those guys are not going to be able to compete. And if you're an actual atheist who wants a better look, you would much rather have a smaller community with a better reputation. Promise. Why? Because that serves your interests a lot better than having a bigger community with a bunch of people that everyone hates. Everyone hates those debate me bros guys. Even the other atheists hate those guys. Why? Because they're awful human beings. They are only here to humiliate other people. That's their only agenda. They don't care about atheism. They aren't loyal allies for your cause. Why? Because they hate you too. Turn on them and see. But ask Dallas Wade. I don't know for a fact what the pushback he got was. But as far as my understanding of that situation is an atheist started trying to criticize the atheist community. And he got this firestorm from within, geez, so surprised, of who? The baby bro clown, bully thugs. The baby bro clowns, bully thugs. 
The reason why I'm not even the slightest bit afraid of them is because they're only intellectual bullies, and they're really idiots, I promise. They really are idiots. It's not, I'm not saying that I'm, for any other reason. It's the God's honest truth. They're a pack of idiots. They're only one step ahead of like the Noah's Ark Christians. That's the only reason they survive. But look at what they did. I guarantee you they, they bully thug Dallas Wade. That's what I heard. I didn't watch. go watch the reports. I watched his video starting to gently critique the atheist community. Watch for more of those. Started to delicately critique the atheist community. They came to bully thug him. Shut his mouth. Be idiots like us. Don't criticize us. The tension between them and the philosophical atheists is going to grow and it's going to end in favor of the philosophical atheists and those bully thug clowns who have been operating as atheists will be thrown out of your community and it's better for you, the atheists. Why? Because you much prefer to have a smaller community with a good reputation that people like and respect than a bigger community that everybody hates. Promise. Look at Christianity if you don't believe me. We had a really big, <laughs> we had a really big community that a lot of people hated, and it didn't help us. <laughs> I swear to God. Be much better for Christianity to have a small, small, polished set of honest actors who everyone respects. Because those guys, we don't necessarily agree with them, but those guys are good, decent people, and they, they, you know, they serve Christ with dignity, and they're respectful to a man. And hallelujah, those good people. I want what they have. That's the normal calculation. When you see a person who's got it together operating on all five cylinders and they're part of a small community that's tightly, tightly knit and operating on all five cylinders, people respect that community. And that community can go overnight from nowhere to the entire country. That's kind of what happened with grunge. Remember I started with, And I forget just why taste I yeah, get. It's kind of what happened. It's a small community in Seattle, right, where they really actually deeply cared about music. So they had all these really like alt bands that were like playing all the time, really into a certain type of punk. Same idea. It's better for the 80s community if you get rid of those bully thug debate me bros. Really honest to God is. Why? Because everybody hates them. Everybody hates them. And most people think that's what an atheist is. That should bother. If you're an actual atheist listening to me, like a Shannon, that should give you chills. Why? Because that's the God's honest truth. Shannon talking directly to you if you're listening. You can be as charming as you want, and sometimes you can be really, really, really charming. But 20% of your audience is abusive, evil douchebags. So it doesn't matter how charming you are. Why? Because that's the only experience that someone will have of atheism. They go watch your video and they're like, yeah, she seems like a nice person. She's saying, you know, she's fun. She's amiable. And someone rolls up on them and spits in their face and calls them stupid, you stupid Christian. That's the only experience they will have of atheism. And they will hate atheists. It's a, it's a, ask around. If you don't believe me, guys, ask around. Ask a Christian that you respect. If there isn't a Christian respect, find some Christians that you respect and ask around. Are there atheists who do that? And they'll say, yeah, a lot. And then look around, and you'll see it's happening as we speak right now. There's a whole contingency of people in atheists using atheism to just bully stupid people. They are stupid too, but they are using the banner of atheism to just publicly humiliate somebody who's a little dumber than them. That's all that's going on, guys. Jennifer Peoples used to do that in the atheist experience. One time a slow guy called up, like a really obviously kind of disabled guy, and she basically just abused him on air. I swear to God, I was the only person who noticed it. It was horrifying. That had happened today, people probably would have noticed it. Why? Because they're a bit more hip to that. But it was just a, like a not, it wasn't, you know, she just said, oh, it's Christian, therefore stupid, let me treat him like crap, let me totally abuse him. And it was actually kind of just a slow guy. Like, it was a Christian, yeah, I mean, it was a Christian, sure. But he was just like, you know, slow. Really, obviously, not well. Some of these people who they're out beating up on right now are really obviously not well. They're not, it's not that they're Christians are stupid. It's that some of these people are just, you know, not all there. So, anyways, the long and the short of it is, yeah, rambling a little, but, you know, as I say, always, always good stuff, kids. Always good stuff. It's always primo. It's pre this is good stuff you can't get anywhere else. You can go watch those cat videos if you want to, but you ain't going to learn what time it is.
And if you don't think I just told you what time it is, think again and re-listen. Why? Because it did. Promise. Gave you valuable information in this video. Some of this stuff is pure gold. Some of this stuff I sense. Why I don't censor myself? Why? Because, you know, the downside of me rambling is I ramble. <laughs> ramble a lot. Yeah, I ramble. But some of the stuff I say off the cuff is the actual gold. It's the actual insight. It's the actual thing worth hearing. And so far you got to dig to hear that stuff in my videos, but that won't always be the case. I'll clean up my act. I'll get it together eventually. I promise. <laughs> I promise. I'll clean it up. I'll, I'll do better in the future. So, anyways, just thought I'd ramble once more about atheism as a community. No, it's not necessarily a community. It's a loose collective of people with disparate interests. But they're all loosely under the banner of atheism and they operate in the space as a collective. And part of the reason, paradoxically, why they are so touchy about the label atheist is because there isn't a real community. There aren't atheist organizations back there in any town USA. They're few and far between. There are five to ten churches in every town across this country. Five to ten churches in every town across this country. So, as I've said before, I've got the gun soon, I'll have the numbers. Gonna win, yeah, I'm taking over. So, I don't know, kids. That's how I see it. As always, you are free to disagree with me. Just don't do it out loud and on Twitter. Just don't write it down on Twitter and I won't care. <laughs> or in the comments. Just don't write it on Twitter or in the comments. If you disagree with me, just keep it to yourself. Why? Because I don't want to hear it. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. All right, fine, fine. Fine, I'll end the video. End the video, Craig. <laughs> You're digging a hole. All right, all right, I'll end the video. So, there you have it, kids. That's all for now. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen.